Good evening, and thanks for giving up the, the sun. Uh, I'm a technology uh, entrepreneur. I sold my last company a few years ago, and I now spend quite a lot of time um, investing in, um, in, in new entrepreneurs. Uh, but as Jeff said, about three years ago, I uh, started a newsletter called Exponential View uh, because I reflected on a 20 years in the tech industry, and I saw that, that things were, were changing. Uh, there was a moment of excitement burgeoning, uh, a combinatorial convergence of rapidly improving technologies, technologies whose rate of improvement was actually uh, increasing. And, and at the heart of those technologies were breakthroughs in uh, artificial intelligence, driven by uh, improvements in computational power, driven by some research breakthroughs uh, that had given us a sense of belief that this technology can be, can be useful. And AI turned out to be the glue between a lot of other uh, innovations. Uh, and I saw that these um, incredible outcomes we could achieve could improve healthcare, they could improve the way we finance things, they could improve access to services. Uh, crucially, they could also reduce our dependence on oil. So it was a very exciting time, and I started to survey uh, uh, the world. But equally, I became very concerned um, in, in 2015 about some things that I saw as, as outcomes of the way in which our institutions were working in the face of these technologies, and those were concerns with uh, inequality uh, measured across a number of different dimensions, not just within nations, which we know has risen to, to record levels in the past 100 years, but also uh, between companies. The most successful companies are very much more successful than they've ever been. The more <laughs> mediocre companies are yet more mediocre. Um, a, gro a range um, of risks around a polarization of uh, opinion, the, uh, the, the sorting, the homophily that seemed to be growing both in the digital realm and in the, uh, in the physical realm, uh, bias around automated systems, problems of exclusion. I was not worried about the singularity, about when machines become people. Um, I was much more worried about the market dominance of technology platforms. Um, but overall, I was optimistic. And so I'm here now, three and a half years on from, from spending time looking at this, and I still sit there saying, look, AI does change, change everything. Um, the idea that we can put intelligence everywhere, decision-making according to context and environment, in every part fabric of our lives, is a very hard one to get your head around. Uh, but it's surely greater than the change that we've seen over the last 250 years when we've taken light from being a luxury that lived in one room in a house to being something that is everywhere. I actually have a little LED strip on the underside of my bookshelves. I mean, that's an incredible luxury. And then that LED strip cost me four pounds. My belief is that institutions now that we, we live with need to uh, adapt or be reborn. And when I say institutions, I really do mean every institution, how we govern, how we figure out how we govern, how we teach, how we finance innovation, how we choose to innovate, ultimately how we agree, come to a consensus about how we should be governed. Um, and my concern is that if we don't adjust our institutions, you know, what will happen? Well, if we don't, the trends that I identified around market dominance, around inequality and polarization will exacerbate and they will asymptote. Now, nature has its own way of finding its level. Um, the Bourbons discovered this in 1789. Uh, if you don't fix things, things will fix you. Um, now, I'm extremely optimistic because in the past three years, in 2018, we are having very many public discussions about this issue in London and in other great cities and smaller cities around the world. And that gives me hope that we will reach some sunny upland. Thank you. Thanks, Azim. Thank you.